I think the important thing is that we must agree, accept that we had intense debates in the past. We had issues, we have issues with the global financial architecture. Those debates sometimes were misunderstood, gravely misunderstood, especially between the North and the South. I think we are okay now. We are almost on even ground. And on the basis of that, we want to encourage ourselves to move on, to get the job done. I remember when we met in June in Paris, it was a very intense debate. And, but we are okay with that now. I think checking with colleagues that we interact with individually as heads of state um, from the north, I sense that we have some convergence. I'm repeating that so that I lay the basis for us to make progress, to support what President Nana has said. But as we do that, I just want to remind ourselves about the very basics that provoked this debate, that drove the need to change the global financial architecture. As we enhance our own institutions, Africa Export Import Bank, and others. We need to remind ourselves that the combination of the international institutions, our African institutions, the new institutions that we create must not forget certain basics. Why we drop the arguments. I just want to summarize one, a few of them. One, we agreed that we are not assessed correctly in terms of the credit risk assessment of our countries and therefore our continent. And in this package of reforms, institutions, legal changes, we would like this to remain on the agenda of the package of our institutions, that we are not assessed correctly. We are basically given a higher risk profile unfairly. And we should not forget that. One of the reasons that this is happening is because our balance sheets, our economies, are not valued correctly. It's just one. Yes, there's issues of political risk, issues of business, ex exchange exposure, risk, name it all. That's why you experts are there. We want to remind ourselves that we are not valued correctly. We have assets that don't come into our balance sheets. That must change as we drive this change of the global financial architecture. I just want to remind ourselves about that. If you value an economy, Ghanaian economy, Kenyan economy, smaller than what actually it is, it means the headroom is limited for which you can access financing. That must not be the case going forward. That's number one. And we expect the institutions of ours, Professor Roma, to assist us together with your colleagues in valuing us correctly. Very important. Number two, very dry. We want to see a lower cost of capital. No debate about that. Engraved in what we do, the changes we drive, we want to see a lower cost of capital, a fair cost of capital. Africa is currently discriminated against in the pricing of capital. Of course, it's connected somehow to the risk assessment. But even then, same business, same sector, same profiling, everything, gearing similar, we pay more. Increasing the cost of doing business in our countries, on our continent, inhibiting the much needed growth of our economies. Not accepted. So let's address that. It's number two. Dry as it is. Combinations of funds, the SDRs we're talking about, everything that we're hearing, this must not lose us, or we must not lose it along the way. Number three, someone may say this is controversial, but it's not. And I think my fellow colleagues who lead countries are aware that in Africa we're wasteful. 
generally, we are wasteful. We cannot dictate what an individual does with their money. But when these institutions lend, continue to lend, the new ones we create lend to us as African countries, we want to encourage ourselves and you not to lend for consumption expenditure. Let's focus the credit for revenue generation. Let's not support businesses, economies, veering too much on luxury expenditure. We must focus on basics, growth, production, revenue generate, generating expenditure, for which credit must be availed and priority given for that. Strongly believe in that. Number four, very dry, very simple. Africa must buy from itself. We must do business with each other. We have an inherent tendency when we want to buy something, procure something, to think of a former colonial master, to think of overseas. We must look inside. We must do business with each other. We are the continent that trades, invests in itself the least. President Ruto talked of our critical menos, which are important for the green energy revolution. And most times the meetings that President Nana talked about we go to is to attract FDI. And the perception of FDI is from Europe, is from America, is from Asia. FDI, foreign direct investment. Maybe let's change the name and call it our own investment mobilization efforts. Find your own name. I don't care the name you give it. So let's look around ourselves. Let's trade with each other more. Let's exchange the import-export list from one another at a central level, even at a banking financial institutions level, Professor Rome. That must be almost a mundane thing to do. And I think it will answer partially to what President Nana said, God helps those who help themselves. We don't read the Bible and we want a good life, but we don't want to work for that. It's an inherent contradiction, I suggest. And I think lastly, I would suggest that we must time frame what we are doing in this reform. Time frame, clear walking path, implementation plan, and be rigid about it. Time is not on our side. When we've done these things, we will grow our economies. We will create jobs for our youthful population. We will create more business opportunities with our own African businesses. And then we can provide sustainably social support for the weak, the sick, the old, the retired, and the young in terms of education for our population.